Everybody wants to know what we're using to install our fences on a day to day and this is quite a bit different than what we're using in Wyoming. Using what I would say is the best truck in the world. Other than it's a Ford. Other than that. Other than that. That's a big, that's a... First I would direct you to this. These are F650s and that is probably the biggest downfall to this vehicle is that it's a Ford. Not my choice. This is what we have. Chevy really hasn't gotten anywhere as far as a super duty big crew truck like this. So step it up Chevy, you're failing. One of the things I consider to be essential for a crew truck is it needs to seat at least four people with a seat belt for every person. We don't need anybody riding center seat or anything like that. Crew cab, that's essential for us. I just don't want any vehicles that aren't crew cab. Right off the bat, you will see that this is the workhorse of our operation down here. We don't have any diggers. Well, okay, we do have some diggers, but this is what gets all the work done. And because it gets all the work done, we take very good care of it. We have a lot of complaints about these and how fragile they are because they fall over and everybody throws them in the back of a truck and they break the motor mounts and they break all the plastic and they break the handles and they bend them up. Make a mount to hold it securely. One of the things I like to do is I like to make it so that everything fits in there securely without having to use any straps because that way somebody can't forget a strap and then everything's falling off. So this doesn't take a single strap to hold it in there. So in here, now hang on, hang on, hang on, wait. I would be remiss if I didn't give props to the man that basically designed this truck and that is Sean King. This is a replica of the Sean King truck only with some of our personal twists on it for what we do, such as the driver. That's something we came up with. And these pack outs on top of the boxes, that's something we did. But this design is 100% Sean King's and he calls them the super fencer or the super truck or I don't know, something like that. So in this bin, what we have is we have tool drawers and this houses all of our wrenches and everything that we could possibly need, all of our small hand tools. We have gloves, we have a laser level, zip ties in that drawer. In this one we have squares, punches, files, here we have rail notchers for both aluminum and vinyl, pipe wrenches, bolt cutters, PVC cutters, earplugs, tire pressure gauge. Here we have nails. I don't know why nails are in here, but they're in here. We have levels, digital levels with angle readout, uh, tape measures. Oh, there's all my tape measures that belong in the shop. I wonder why I didn't have any tape measures the other day in the shop. Hey. Did somebody paint those yellow? Cause you guys have an awful lot of the other tape measures. Is one of those, are those both yellow? You guys painted those, you stole them and painted them. Never do that to your beautiful tape measures. So we're talking about the color of those tape measures. We're not talking about this yellow, we're talking about this yellow. As you'll recall, these are faux pas tape measures. So it's never your fault with a faux pas tape measure because the measurements on here are completely random. You may or may not get it right. And that's, that's the design of the tape measure is to take the blame off of you, the operator. Never your fault with faux pas. Anyhow, we have all these and they're painted yellow and that means that if it's yellow, it belongs on this truck. We have another truck. Oh, speaking of which, we didn't even introduce you properly. Hang on, come here, come here. This truck is shake and bake right there. The other truck that we have is Mungus Chungus. That's named after my dog that was a little fat and we called her Mungus Chungus and we thought it was funny so that's the name of that truck is because it's kind of big, Mungus Chungus. Anyhow, I digress. So if it's yellow, it belongs on this truck. Now I suspect that those guys stole tape measures from the shop and painted them yellow so that they could have 12 tape measures on their truck. Uh, this drawer, we have hammers. This is a wrench for the tires, pry bars, some cat's paws, stuff like that. This drawer here, we have screwdrivers, cutters, pliers, hog ring pliers, Allen wrenches, everything there. Next drawer down, we have sockets. We even have the old fashioned set of fence pliers. Why? Because you can't have a fence truck without these. Have they ever been used? No, no, they haven't. But if we ever need them, boom, they're right there. We have sockets. We try to think of everything. These are sockets to take their lug nuts off. And then the other socket is a socket to fix the track on mini me. If it happens to fall off, which mini me is the small MT 85, which we have had problems with here. We have all of our cutting devices. We have knives, blades. Uh, oh, here's something that I bet a lot of you guys don't have. That's a water key. So if you're working at a school or some industrial building where they have taken all the knobs off, this is a water key that fits every single faucet out there. So put one of those on your truck. In this drawer, we have crescent wrenches, more channel locks, then we always use gear wrenches. I'm a huge fan of gear wrenches. I don't think that's actually a gear wrench. We bought the cheap Harbor Freight version of that, so we'll see how long they last. This is a flat tire. Why am I carrying this flat tire around? Could you, could you take my flat tire? Thank you. How you doing, Brian? I like that hat. Hey, do you know you have nails in like three different spots in this truck? I can't get the yeah. nails down there, so I put them there. <clears throat> yeah, I got gotcha. you. I like to have small, 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 like loaded up. 
These are the nails that we use in our Jipfast G2. These are what shoot our pickets straight onto our metal frame gates. And then the longer ones, these longer two and a half are when we use our horizontal fences. They have thicker boards and so we need the longer nails to go into the thicker boards and still make it into the steel. And if you shoot these things on here, they're not coming off. They are impossible to remove. They're textured and once they go in, they're, they're stuck. This is what we like to call the layout bin. So this is gonna have all of our stuff for laying out a fence. Mr. Fence template kit, so if we need to route something in the field, we've got bandsaw blades, we have a four foot level, our equalizers, tape measures, wasp spray, paint, clamps for our template kit. We've got 500 feet of heavy duty string. So if we do need string on projects, we have that string. That's the only string I like to use. It doesn't break, it's easy to roll up. This string is terrible. This string is so much better. We can pull on it and never break it. It's very tough to break. How many times have you been out there digging a hole on a fence line and your diggers hit the string just a little bit and then poof, there goes your string. That won't happen with this stuff. Then we have the pack outs and we added this because we saw that there was space here and we're like, well, we're gonna fill that space because why not? Both these pack outs together have all the fasteners that we can possibly use on a fence because the last thing we want to do is get to a job and find out that we're short screws. When we pack all these guys' jobs, they get screws every time, but these screws are only there in case they need more. They should have all the screws they need, but if they don't, they've got spares. This is the trash bin. So they keep some stuff in here, water jug, bucket, but if they have trash, they can throw the trash in here. This is kind of a catch-all where all of the longer tools go. We've got the thumper from Mr. Fence. We've got diggers. We've got brooms, shovels, hand post pounder. It's, it's a hodgepodge. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is typically where on Sean's trucks you would see a little beaver. However, if you know anything about us, you know that we don't dig. So that was not extremely useful to us. What we're going to do is we're going to put a door here that folds down this way so it'll fold down and lay flat if we need to put a little beaver in here. But then when we're not using it for a little beaver, it'll fold up here and block everything in so we can stop tying things. And it just gives us another possum belly to dump longer things in if we need to without having to strap it down. Right up here, you'll see that we have our, what the heck did we call that thing? Where's your other one? There's only one in there. There's only one. How come you only have one straight away? Not you. Dang it. This is where we keep our straight topper. Where's your other straight topper? Did you ever get yours back from clay? You better get another one put in there. Ooh, that was dangerous. As mentioned before, one of the things we try to do is design everything so that it can be put in there without any straps and be locked in. That is how that goes. It has its own little slot, it can't come out. This is our post puller. If we drive a post a little too deep or if we need to go and remove some posts on a project, we can easily do that with our post puller. And we use these quite a bit. These are available along with the straight toppers are available at swifence.com and they go on every truck. These were recommended to us by Sean King. These are tent stakes. So they cost about 25 bucks a piece. We use these tent stakes instead of form stakes for concrete because they don't have the holes in them that cut up our strings and our equalizers. So. And they have this nice head on them, which is nicer to hit. And they're a lot more expensive, but they're better. You just have to make sure you guys pick them up off a job. This is something we did different. This is one of those places where we have to use a strap. Why do we have to use a strap? Because we didn't realize there was nothing back here and we lost a ladder off the backside one day. We are going to weld something back here so that those can't come off. And as soon as we do that, we will no longer need to use a bungee cord right here. But this is where we keep all of our short step stools. We carry two on each truck. This bin is our strapping bin. We have chains, anchor chains for pulling posts. We have a little hand pump for sucking water out of holes. This is a strap winder. Straps, power thing. They carry some saran wrap or shrink wrap on, not saran wrap, that's kitchen stuff. Extension cord, garden hose, 20 foot log chain. We can use these for edge protectors so we don't cut our straps or to protect the edge of vinyl pickets and stuff that are a little bit softer and easier to bend. So this is our chain link bin. So we have we have our top rail dresser, boundary strainers, a couple pole jacks in here, extra screws, nails for wood fence. We have a blower, nail guns, nails for our donuts right down here for nailing donuts to vinyl fence. Truss rod bender, pipe tightener. That's a socket set. Hammer drill right here. This is a nail gun, DeWalt concrete nailer for nailing the donuts to the steel posts. We have more pack outs so we can have the thin ones. So these are all just different bits, nut drivers. This is all their bits for their impacts and drills and stuff. So sockets, ratchets, 
So we put them all in these pack outs because when I tell a crew to go get my bit set, it should have everything that we need to basically do an entire fence. That's how we organize all that stuff. Now, something I saw on TikTok the other day that I'd like to implement is there was a gal and she was pretty popular on the job site because she had the Milwaukee snack out packed with like goldfish and stuff like that. And I think maybe we need to probably put some more space on this truck somewhere and, and definitely go with the Milwaukee snack out. As handy as the pack out is, the snack out. Now there's an idea. This, this is the money bin. Battery chainsaw, battery operated pressure washer, table saw, this table saw, I love this table saw. Why does it work so good for us and it doesn't have a cord? These things are amazing and it fits in the bin. That's, that's a big part of this, it definitely fits in the bin. Concrete vibrators, saws of three different types. This one, now this is the saw I like. That sucker's handy, it's easy to use, one-handed. This saw right here, nobody likes it. And nobody likes it because the blade's on the wrong side, they wanna be able to look on this side since they're right-handed. We have porta bands we have a big porta band a little porta band this is all our battery chargers. So we have an inverter here. If you look down in there, there's a battery charger right there on the back wall. These are just stored batteries. So we store all the batteries that are charged up. Every truck has a plethora of batteries. Can't have too many batteries. And that's how we keep everything charged. So as they're driving down the road, they can turn that inverter on. Very critical to make sure that you turn that off because you will eat up your battery very quickly. But I have an app on my phone that tells me when the battery's low and then I call Brian and I say, hey, your truck's telling me it's battery's low. So this is our ram set, Jipfast G2. This is what we shoot the nails on with, gas charged, takes these nails. These aren't cheap, the consumables are tough to get. I'm trying to find a reliable place to get those and hopefully soon we will have that. This is the power supply for these reels. We are not using these reels currently. A lot of people put their air hoses on these. We haven't done that yet. Why haven't we done that? We don't want to, didn't have time. Didn't have enough air hose. So they mechanically spool in, but they will not mechanically spool out. Yeah, you gotta pull on. I don't know, they're there. We don't use them. I thought about using one to wind cords with. It's, it's a shame, we, we just don't use them. And then this is a slide out. So on the slide out, what we have, and this is going downhill. So we have our little air compressor. This air compressor is nice because it's quiet. However, it's a piece of crap. What we want is we want oil. They make oil compressors and they work a lot better in the heat. These things overheat terribly in the summertime. So before summer, we're gonna have to come up with a different solution that's hopefully quiet and trade these out. But I love these because they're quiet and they work good in the winter and when it's cool. Then we have these 3,800 watt generators that we put on every truck because I want power no matter where we're at. Oh, and we have a welder back here too. What welder do we use? We use the cheapest Harbor Freight welder they make. I think the thing costs like 130 bucks and you get a 110 welder that actually works pretty decently. So we put a welder with a welding hood on every truck I know a lot of people have gas. I think Sean puts a gas powered air compressor up here. They're just so loud. We'd rather have a generator so that if we don't have power from a customer's house, we can just fire up our generator and run the air compressor off that. We can charge batteries. We can do whatever we need without having to use a power supply if there's not a power supply close. So, and I think we can even use those to weld with. Have we tried to weld on those yet? Yeah. 3,800 watts might, might be enough to weld with. So it takes a good solid 15 to 20 amps to be able to weld. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of it, except for up here, we have a couple ladders. Uh, they carry six foot ladders up here. And then you'll see we have the light bars. You wanna turn on your lights, show them your lights. We'll come to the back. So they have some hazard lights here on the back. So if they have a problem or if they're on the side of the road, we've got some lights, we've got lights on the front. And then we have these bright lights, which work really well when we're loading up at night. The other thing we have is these cameras. Shout out to these cameras. They're probably the worst camera I've ever seen. They show you nothing and serve no purpose whatsoever. So if somebody's got a better camera system for these trucks, please let me know. These are terrible. We can't see anything. I hate them. I hate them. They're worthless, but they're there. And then like the one in my Tesla, I can see everything. I can, I can see the gender of a freaking bird that's flying by. It's amazing. That's what I need for this. Yeah, somebody's figured it out, but this company, they have not. The deck is roughly 20 feet long. We now have ramps. So what we're gonna do is we'll have ramps that we can either set up right here or off the side, and we'll be able to bring the Mini Me, the Bobcat MT-85, we'll be able to load it up onto here, no problem. So if we need to take it to a job, we still don't have to pull a trailer and get it on and off, so. There's your cameras. Hopefully you can tell those are trees, but I have no idea what any of that stuff is. I don't know what that is. This is blob. I can't even tell what view this is. The thing is, is you're thinking, hey, they're just dirty lenses, but they're not just dirty lenses. We could go back there and we could clean that lens up and it'd look exactly the same. Just not happy with that at all. No frills or anything in here, vinyl floors, vinyl seats. It does have a radio. It does have power windows, power locks. 
cruise control, all that stuff. So, and I think that's important. I really don't like anything without power windows and locks and stuff like that. Uh, these are the switches to turn on the lights. So you have auxiliary switches automatically. If you people with Fords already know this. Us people with Chevys, we don't have that. We have to go put switches in. So yeah, they work pretty good. And they drive pretty easy. You'd think that this thing's a tank and you're probably looking at the tail back there thinking, well, how do you ever turn without swiping people out? And the reality is, is it's not hard at all. My trailer, the big trailer that we pull, has a tail that sticks out just the same amount behind the rear axle as this does. So do you find it difficult to drive this? Not at all. Not even a little bit. That is one of the reasons that we chose these trucks is because they don't take a CDL. And that's important to us because CDLs are now even more difficult to obtain than they were a year ago because of the new requirements. So we don't want anything that takes a CDL and also doesn't take a trailer. So I feel like that eliminates some of the risk of putting crews on the road, uh, not that extra trailer to get run into or left unhooked or if you watch Successful Contractor, you kind of know the things that can happen with trailers. So this, this takes a lot less qualification and while it's big, it is very easy to drive. So that's why we do this. Hopefully you've enjoyed this walk around the super fencer, I think is what Sean King says. Designed by Sean King with a couple twists from SWI. If you wanna see how Wyoming does things, check out this video over here for one of their truck walkthroughs. Or if you'd like to see the trailers that they use because all of our guys have CDLs, check out this video over here. Hope you've enjoyed the tour of this truck. And until next time, you have a good dang day.